The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Tuesday morning. We got some CPI data this morning. The market's still trying to figure out whether they like that number or not yet. Nonetheless, we got a headline print of 6.4% in January. And interesting, as I jumped around to a few different articles in terms of news sites right after that 830 print in terms of how that number gets framed. And I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse. We got the markets basically flat right now, but boy, you talk about some volatility. We got a quick spike up to almost 4190. We're as low as 4135 right now. We're literally flat to the tick in the S and P's. But I'd watch out today, folks. And I'm going to jump around first, and we'll jump through these articles. But just interesting how the headlines, even of some of uh, what are talking about the journal. We're talking about Bloomberg. We're talking about CNBC. So the journal, inflation cooled to 6.4 percent in January. Pretty remarkable when we're cooling to a 6.4% number, right? That's one way to put things. Annual inflation cooled for the seventh straight, seventh straight month to 6.4% in January. And this is talking about the headline number. Core at 5.6. Now, boy, you take gasoline out of things, though, right? You just look at that core number. That's a scary number, man. When you're talking about basically just chopping around 6%, yes, we're coming down, but decelerating in terms of the level and the quickness and the speed that we are decelerating with. Now, then you jump over to Bloomberg. You want a different take on things? Here it is. The headline on Bloomberg, U.S. inflation stays elevated, adding pressure for more Fed hikes. Same exact data, little bit of a different twist in terms of how they come. And then we go to CNBC. You get the CNBC angle. Inflation rose 0.5%, more than expected, and up 6.4% from a year ago. Did it cool? Is it up, is it up more than expected? Uh, all of the above, folks. That's the point. There's a little something in there for everybody. But bottom line is, I think the market's going to be a little bit worried about this number. That's my hot take on things. We'll see how it plays out. But... If you think that this number's coming from 6.4 down to like nothing in no time, folks, it is not accelerating to that level. And that core graph, okay, you keep your eye on the core number, it's not accelerating to that level either, in my opinion. And we are priced in at a level, man, that I don't think it is at least pricing appropriately the risk that inflation is a little bit more sticky than maybe the market is anticipating. We'll leave it at that. Markets, all in the red, at least for now. We got 21 minutes to go until the opening bell. You got the NASDAQ 100, negative by 32. Dow off by 19 right now. You have the Russell off by seven. Crude, off a of buck 65. Yes, 78.48. We got some action in the dollar. We got some action in yields, of course. That's hitting some currencies, commodities. Gold, there's some action for you on gold. What do we do, though? We're right back to basically where we were coming into that number. Gold spikes to 1882. We're as low as 1857. Just for some context here, putting it on a one-minute chart to see. First, you got the spike lower. Then you got the spike higher. And where are we? We're right back to where we were right now in that gold contract at 1870. We jumped to notes and bonds. Again, a one-minute chart to see the volatility on the CPI number. We have a little bit of lower price and higher yield. That's after some quick volatility in the first few minutes after the number. But right now, we're negative by four ticks right now as we have the market in the red. We have yields higher. What's that going to correlate to? If you're following the program, you probably know a stronger dollar, right? It's all related, man, right now. And they are trading completely in tandem across the board in correlation. The dollar index positive today. So what are we looking at? We're looking at... Higher rates coming at you, at least marginally right now. We got 20 minutes to go, man. I'd be careful in this market at 4140, folks, because if the market figures out that, hey, guess what? Things are not going as quickly as we may be anticipated for inflation. You might see a repricing of things, to say the least, and that would lead to, what's it going to lead to? It's going to lead to lower market. It's going to lead to higher yields. It's going to lead to a stronger dollar. And we're seeing all of that right now play out. And keep in mind, folks, the S&Ps, the S&Ps are negative by 10 points, okay? We're negative by 10 points. And this wasn't an instantaneous spike, okay? This spike, I put it on a one-minute chart to show because sometimes you'll get, you know, after earnings, right, you'll see that one instantaneous spike that gets a one-second print and somebody either gets the spike low or the spike high. Not exactly what's taking place, as in we are 50 
points, almost below where we were at 833. Now you say, okay, you had 12,600 contracts that traded above 4170. Right, you had some price elevation. The market has given that up pretty substantially, and even where we were at 850, okay, market now given up about 30 S and P points. Get ready for some volatility today, folks. That's the bottom line. We jump over the VIX. The VIX naturally you're going to suck some volatility premium out of the market because there's less variables in play. We know one of those variables. One of those variables was the CPI coming into this morning. That volatility is taken out of the market. So it would make sense no matter how things move that we get a little bit of a pullback, but then you factor in the market action. Okay. And you see the spike from an 18 handle to a 1946 right now in the price of the volatility index. Let's see how some of the FANG stocks are reacting. There's some volatility with the market. Amazon, Right at about $99 right now, 98.74. We see how the big dog Apple's trading. Apple, 152.72. Let's take a look at Microsoft. They've been on quite a tear recently. Microsoft right now, marginally lower as we have the S&Ps off 11. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla, there's some volatility, man. Up to almost 200. Tesla shares down about a couple bucks right now. How about Google? Google shares looks to trade lower, down about 70 cents from $95 to $94.43 right now for the price of Google as it drops. And yeah, as I said, folks, I would be careful on this market, man. The head, it's, it's, it's so interesting how in throughout this entire pandemic and the inflation that we've been battling, there's almost something for every single person in every single data point. Now, of course, there's been some woozies out there in terms of one way or the other. But because it's been so... Um, sector by sector, right? People talk about you might see a rolling recession sector by sector, right? Because there's been winners and losers in every report, it's so different that you almost have the ability to point to any aspect of things and look for good versus bad in either aspect. You add in energy on top of things, okay, folks? And that's the big reason that you have to put it back. Let me find the journal one. That's the big reason that you have this overall drop. Now, folks, keep in mind, all right, this chart, this chart has basically core CPI. I mean, if you're technical traders, okay, just follow me here for one moment, man. Please pull up my chart if you're looking at it. It's the simplest chart in the world, okay? It's on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. You probably don't even need a membership to pull up wallstreetjournal.com. It's probably still on there. I'll refresh it in a second to see if it is, but just pretend for a moment you take off the overall. You take it off, right? So we're just looking at a chart of the core CPI. Then keep in mind that, folks, this is a chart going back four full years, okay? So, yeah, you see that number chopping around at two. You see us chopping around at six. I mean, boy, you could say that all you've been doing is consolidating for the better part of 2022 and 2023. All the headlines were the rage when we got the gas spike in 2022, okay? But look at the core, Yes, we're now under where we were in the middle of last year, okay? But you're not accelerating, you're decelerating. And boy, if we're ever on that type of a path in terms of that deceleration that we just got, it is gonna take a long time to get back to 2%, folks, and I'm not even sure that we're on that path just yet, let alone if we are, what kind of an angle you're dealing with in terms of how steep is that path gonna be. Be careful in this market today, folks. I'm not always out here talking about it, but I feel like this market is gonna tank today. And it's moving pretty quickly, man. We're down 14. S&P priced almost for the bull case in inflation. And I think this data today at least will say, hey, maybe we need to reprice those probabilities just a bit. We'll come back. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll get his take on the number this morning. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps right now at pre-market session lows with the S&P right now, negative by 15, NASDAQ 100 off by 68 right now. We're talking about a 10-year yield rising. We got some dollar strength on the heels of that CPI number. To talk about it all, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market at 12 Eastern Time every day. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade, Break, you do, break down the day's market action, walk you through, usually talking about three hypothetical trade setups, folks, but I imagine they'll be talking some market action to kick things off with the economic data. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, a head-scratching reaction by the markets to when the actual CPI data came out. A lot of dust in the air. It looks like it's starting to settle now with stocks only moderate, moderately uh, lower to start the day, but I thought this uh, CPI number that we got really across the board, Tommy, with only a few exceptions, was a, li a little hotter, a, a little you know firmer than than than, than the market wants, and uh, the reaction was really interesting. And we, you know, we'll see how it plays out throughout the day, Tommy. But here's for your viewers. When you get the CPI data, you get the chart, you get the table, and there's 21 lines on that table. I saw three lines with a negative number. Used car prices down 1.9%, fuel oil down 1.2%, and medical care services down 07 Tommy, every other line on the CPI data was higher. Shelter up 07 food up 05 energy up 2%. Gasoline, 2.4%. Apparel, up 0.8%. I mean, 18 of 21 lines on this table was higher from last month, Tommy. You make some great points. When you were talking about it at the beginning, Kevin, I was holding my breath and I was saying to myself, please tell me I'm not crazy and that Kevin's going to say that he agrees that things might be a little hot in this number because I was watching it, Kevin. At first, you got a first thrust maybe a little bit lower in the market. I blinked for a second, got myself a second cup of coffee, shame on me, during that moment. And before I know it, S&P was up 32 points like that. I said, really? On those types of numbers, man? Um, it seems like, at least at the market, where it is in terms of 41.50, it spiked as high as 41.85. I have it up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Um, the case that the market is pricing in, Kevin, seems like the market expects 
inflation to go down much more quickly than at least maybe possible, right? None of us can predict it, but I think we're in the, the, the business of trying to predict probabilities and mas placing bets or wagers or investments on the probability something's going to occur. And I feel like this data, Kevin, is hinting at least to the fact that it might take a little bit longer than maybe what the market is pricing in. What's your take on that type of question? I think that's exactly right, Tommy. I think this market is trying to connect the dots to an outcome that they prefer and the data, at least in this CPI data, and frankly, in the wages data from the last payrolls just aren't giving that data. They aren't giving the, the reducing inflation data. Now, you can make the case if you're a cup, three quarters full guy, that uh, year over year inflation in the headline came down from 6.5 to 6.4. Okay, that is lower, but they were looking for 6.2. Uh, core, 5.7 to 5.6, but they were looking for 5.5. So we talk a lot about the consensus versus what the actual number is. These numbers appear, you know, I don't want to uh, paint with a broad brush on one bit of economic data, but these numbers appear to be getting sticky here, and these numbers are getting sticky way too high, Tommy. You said it, man. I was going to say, you beat me to it every time, Kevin. My, I was going to say, are we supposed to get sticky at, at a core number, Kevin, between 5.5 .5 and 6? Obviously, folks, man, that's where I think the market, um, boy, if you see the market, folks, this is my tech. If you see the market figuring out that, man, we're going to get sticky at 5.5, .5, watch out, folks, in terms of how things maybe react. And I'm not sure that's going to happen right now. But, boy, we're at some pretty lofty prices right now for the conversation we're having, Kevin, is is inflation getting sticky on the core at above 5.5. And we're sitting at a market, you know, near 41.75. With that in mind, Kevin, we march forward. We still got some big companies with earnings coming out this week. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today? Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Airbnb. Three okay. earnings plays today on, on Fast Market. Like Folio, Airbnb. Then we'll look at Roblox. And then we'll look at Kraft Heinz, the, the, the consumer staple. How many people don't have something from Kraft Heinz in their refrigerator? I don't think it's a very high percentage, Tommy. So, yeah, we'll look at Roblox, Airbnb, and Kraft Heinz today. Three great stocks, man. Airbnb, I'm always checking that one out. Talk about a fall from the heavens, man, from 200 and change down to 81 bucks. But like many stocks, resurgent um, this year up to, yeah, 116 right now. But, boy, you know, uh, interesting, Kevin, as they come in, they're actually holding steady right now. You got the NASDAQ 100 negative, Airbnb flat right now. And, yeah, as you said, I, uh, I've stayed away from the ketchup a little bit. And they got more than ketchup, folks, in my adult life. But, boy, as a child, man, I had uh, some hot dogs with my ketchup sometimes. You know how it goes. Kevin, I appreciate it. On a busy morning, man, it doesn't get much busier with five minutes to go in the, until the opening bell. We appreciate the time, as always. We'll, we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, man. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. You too. Folks, you heard the great take, man. I agree with a lot of what Kevin put out there. Uh, it's all opinions in terms of where we go forward. But I've learned so much from their program, folks. And you know, this type of environment with the economic data we're getting, with the volatility that is priced into the market, how everything's correlated, and then you add earnings on top of it, man. Airbnb and yeah, that one fall from the heavens. That's really not. How about Roblox? You talk about a fall from the heavens, man. You got to back it up on a three year weekly to see the highs of 141 coming into the end of 2021, basically a one-way trip down to $21. Strong start to the year, like many other growth stocks for Roblox. And they are somewhat of a meta play, metaverse play for Roblox. Gaming, you can create your own games. Uh, I don't think the kids in my household play any of those. But at some point, yeah, they're, they're probably going to be an integral part of the metaverse whenever the metaverse takes foothold. Zuckerberg will tell you that's going to be sooner rather than later. And he's probably right, but sometimes that takes a little bit longer than we all can imagine in our lives. Roblox band, yeah. You look at that one. Whew. At one point, I remember the conversation that Roblox had actually overtaken. Was it Activision Blizzard? I think it was, maybe. Towards the end of 2021, yeah, it was. Because remember, Activision Blizzard was tanking, right? You had Roblox accelerating higher. They overtook them as the most valued company, market cap-wise, in the world. And what happened? People started to recalibrate on both sides. You had Microsoft saying, and guess what? We'll come in and we'll buy Activision Blizzard. And you had Roblox coming in saying, you know what? That was overpriced. And you don't deserve to be trading at those multiples. And we're going to pair you by about 25%. And then you take a look at Airbnb, man. This one's an interesting one as well. Changing the world in terms of how we operate, right? In terms of 
renting houses versus staying at hotels, man. But yeah, you talk about getting hurt like everything else as growth stocks take a hit last year from 180 almost towards the end of 2021, let alone the highs. Yeah, we'll call it 212, man. For Airbnb, you're at 116. We jump over to the Analyze tab on their earnings. They're out with their numbers today, and you're talking about, yeah, quite a move on something like this. More than a $10 move priced in just for their options, let alone exposure throughout the week. You're probably talking about basically a 10% move in either direction for exposure through Friday for Airbnb with their numbers. We're going to see how we trade into those. That's one of the other confounding things, folks, is that if you're making an option trade, you're trading it for earnings, right? You want to be careful. Because on a day like today, we get Airbnb earnings after the bell, right? If you're making a straight play for those earnings, I would wait till the last second, man. Because Airbnb on a day like today, man, you may see some action everywhere in this market. And that may be the trade before 4 p.m. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Markets are open and watch out below today, folks. And I mean it. You got the S&Ps off 22, and I was sitting there talking to Kevin, saying, come on, he's got to be telling me when he's scratching his head that that when the market spiked to 41.85, he was, he was saying to himself, why is that happening, right? That's what I was saying too, folks. That's maybe what many were saying in this market, okay? Because if inflation gets sticky where we are right now, the Fed has a long way to go. 
to put it lightly. And the market does not think the Fed has a long way to go right now. And if they start figuring out that, hey, we may be placing the wrong wagers right now, okay, when we have consumer prices on a core level getting sticky at a number of 5.5 and change, et cetera, okay? Don't underestimate how fast this move can be because let's just take a look at the Fibonacci numbers in terms of where we are this year alone, okay? You're talking about a 3A2 that brings us down another 70 points, and that's just from the run this year, folks. That's just giving up a 3A2, the acceleration we've had since January 1st. It's only February 14th. Of course the market can do that, and of course it can if the data changes, right? And you got to combine the jobs number on top of it, man. You got to combine the January jobs number and the inflation readings as the market's continuing to fall as I'm talking about this, all right? And it doesn't mean I'm right. It doesn't mean I'm going to be right. But the probabilities in my mind, when we came into today at 4150, and then you get this print, watch out, folks, to say the least. Now, I'm going to cherry pick some of the data to go over here. So this is from the journal and their take, okay? And just the number that I want to comment on to, to show you how quickly things can shift from where the market is going to pay attention to, okay? And this is even the journal. They put out great stuff, all right? But one, the one that caught my eye, and it's, it's, going to be the, it's going to be the line you hear everywhere on non-financial news, as in the nightly news when they give one quick ode to um, the numbers today, they probably have, what, a 30-second clip of something like, uh, and in market news, inflation data showed that prices declined for the seventh straight month, seventh straight month, I got to get that one, and yeah, since hitting 9.1% in June, okay, and that's the headline number that we hit. What I want you to keep in mind, folks, okay, and you have to, is that don't pay attention to the headline number when it comes to the market reaction that is possible, okay? Because you want to see why that headline number was where it was. There is the price of light sweet crude. There is June when light sweet crude, crude was at $120. Yes, this matters, but this does not matter to whether the Fed is going to change their decisions for the coming three or four months, okay? If you get this number spiking way back up or way back down, and you have the core number persisting, that is not going to change the path that the Fed is on. And it's so easy to see lines like that and let them get into your head in any way. And I actually almost saw that, and I said, oh, the market's going to tank. The market's going to tank today, man. And maybe it won't. But you know what? I think I said that about 20 S&P points even before this morning, man. And jumping over to the S&P in terms of where we are, it's been a quitty, pretty quick drop since about 8.50 this morning. I had that feeling coming on the air, and we've given up, uh, what, no 30 points. Yeah, we were coming in basically flat to the program, and it's continuing to drop right now at 41.17. So be careful out there, folks. It's been a strong start to the market, and these numbers do not align with, uh, as Kevin was saying, it seems like the, the case is the bull case in terms of what, what's the case in the market right now trading at 41.35. Well, the case is basically the bull case that they're looking for inflation to go away and the Fed will be done and the economy is going to be fine. That's one scenario and it may play out. We've gotten some good data. The jobs number is great data. If inflation comes down, are we going to start to go back into the theme of good news is bad news, bad news is good news? It's possible because that good news is not going to be good news if they come with these inflation numbers, to say the least. Market's only down 25 right now, but we'll see where we go from there. But yeah, that one stuck out. I talked about the core number, man. Core coming in at 5.7. The market was looking for like 5.5. That's not supposed to happen. That's not supposed to happen at all. Let's see. What did core just come in at? 5.5, I believe, or 5.7? Now I'm confused on these numbers as they pull up there. <laughs> and Bloomberg has 5.6. Yeah, nonetheless, it ticks up, folks, in terms of core CPI. Uh, you do not want to see that happening, nonetheless. We'll see where we go from there. All right, let's jump around to the other stories we got pulled up today. Fighting through all the articles I've got pulled up here. One more time, we'll get there. Oh, shame on me. Okay. Let's talk a little bit of Super Bowl. Why not? Super Bowl? Third most watched television show ever, 113 million viewers. The number one is still from 2015. 
pretty remarkable, right? You're going to go back eight years ago and uh, just edged it out at 114.4. That was the game between New England and Seattle. I believe that was the game, right? The Patriots intercepted that on the goal line to end the game. But a strong performance, man, on a great game. Yeah, seven million bucks for a 30 second commercial. Pretty remarkable there. All right, we jump to Lael Brainerd. So she's going to be joining the Biden administration to lead the White House National Economic Council. She's the Fed vice chair, has advocated steady but careful approach to raising interest rates to combat inflation. Um, been a little bit of a dove. So it'll be interesting to see. who replaces her and how that plays out in terms of where that matters to the Fed hiking cycle and how that goes. Um, they talk about in here that maybe this would be a stepping stone if Biden were to win a re-election, which is a long way away from right now, folks, in terms of two years practically away from where they are, but that she could be in a top uh, pick to potentially be a Treasury secretary. Yeah, and she was seen as a top candidate for that in 2020, but didn't quite make the cut. But nonetheless, that may be the deal. And he's going to have a second vac vacancy to fill on his economic advisors as well. Yeah, and as they say here, Brainerd's departure from the Fed could be notable because of the role she played laying out the case for a marginally less aggressive monetary policy in a series of speeches in recent months. She's emerged as a voice of caution against the Fed being too aggressive. That voice is out of there. Yeah, the Fed's vice chair and New York president play key roles in supporting the Fed chair and shaping the agenda. Um, and she's back, Paul. Yeah. And he and so, yeah, he's she's going to get replaced and we'll see how that plays out. I mean, talk about adding a little volatility on top of things as well. Right. As the S&Ps catch a little bit of a pop right now, 4126. Let's jump around currencies. We got crude lower at seventy eight dollars. We got gold off seven dollars. We jump to the dollar index right now. Dollar index. There's the action for you, folks. You know, you're talking about a full point from where you spike to on that number initially 10250 markets like no 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 we belong at 10350 not 10250 pay attention to what's going on in the currency markets folks pay attention to what's going on in the note and bond market we're now below the lows that we got on that spike you got the 10 year right now what off 12 ticks what's that correlating to on the yield what are we pushing above 7.5 right now just at uh, excuse me, 3.75, and we are right at 3.75% right now on the 10 year. The day is just getting started, folks. We got a couple more segments. We got the SPs off 22 points, NASDAQ 100 off only about 70 now, Dow off 170 right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go over some of the companies with their numbers. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Jumping around my chart. Excuse me one second. We have the S&Ps catching a little bit of a bid right now. Oh, come on. My computer's a little sticky right now. There we go. Maybe the market's just moving too quickly. Okay. S&Ps off by 18 points right now, trading at 41.30. Uh, last part I wanted to talk about on that CPI. My dad had mentioned this to me last week and not actually enough attention paid to this, I think. I mean, I'm reading financial news 24-7. I have TFNN on all the time. Uh, overnight, I'm watching Bloomberg or something like that after the market, etc. Hadn't really heard this at all. But here's what it says. Uh, the CPI weighting was changed in terms of how that was calculated for this report and going forward. My dad and I were like, yeah, can you imagine what they're going to say, right? You change the calculation for inflation in terms of tweaking the numbers to a bit. So here were the, the change. At least they referenced it in this Bloomberg article that I was talking about this morning. The January report incorporated new weights for the CPI basket. I'll just say what they said. The consumer basket, not the CPI basket, to try to more accurately capture American spending habits. The shelter components are now the largest share of the overall index, okay, while used cars make up a smaller portion. Now, the thing about this is, uh, that's not going to help at all. That made things worse. Shelter is the one that's going up a lot. Used cars actually surprised to the downside. It could have been worse. This would have been a worse number had it been on the prior calculation. No. Is that right? No, it could have been better. It, yeah, because, yeah, shelter is now a larger portion, and that is accelerating higher. OK, used cars, a smaller portion. And that is actually where you saw a decrease. Shelter costs, biggest service component, make up a third, about a third of the overall CPI rose 0.7 percent on that number. Excuse me. OK. Uh, yes, nonetheless. So take that for what it's worth. Markets right now. A little bit of a bit off the floor, but Joyce, look where we were at 8.30, man. It's been a one-way trip. we got two bars of five minutes since the market's been open. We're now right back to where we actually opened, down about 15 points in the S&Ps. And we jump around to some of the equities with their numbers, Coca-Cola. With strong numbers today, they're up by a quarter percent. We jump over to Coca-Cola, their numbers. Revenue rises fueled by what? Higher prices. Uh, for 2023... Coke projects comp revenue growth of 3 to 5 percent, comp earnings per share growth of 4 to 5 percent. There was a number, I don't know if it was this one or the one I was reading earlier. Let me get you. 12 percent growth in pricing and a more expensive mix of drinks sold. Coke Zero Sugar's volume climbed 9 percent and its coffee business was up 11 percent. The weakest spot was Coke's juice, value-added dairy, and plant-based beverages, which saw volume shrink 7%. For 2023, Coke projects comparable revenue growth, yeah, 3 to 5 and earnings 4 to 5. Wall Street was looking for 3.9 and earnings per share of 3%, so they like that number. I saw organic revenue somewhere growth, and it was probably in dealing with these numbers, the 9, the, the 11. 
you know, what is interesting is, so Tommy, my son, just t- turned two, man, 12 days ago. I can't believe his birthday was 12 days ago. It feels like yesterday. Uh, and he still has whole milk, and he drinks Fairlife, okay? And Fairlife, which is so interesting. Let's see how much they were bought for. So the interesting part is, right, taking a look at even this picture right here, Fairlife, uh, there's what's called DHA Omega, which is good for brain development. So when you're talking about kids especially, they have this DHA now. And what's so interesting is Fairlife, right? Fairlife is like constantly sold out near me. It's constantly sold out. And they don't even have the one with the DHA available anymore. So for what it's worth, they might be dealing with some problems there. And maybe that's part of the reason why you saw the weakest part being value added dairy, saw volume shrink 7%. Russia was a big weight on that as well. But nonetheless, Coke trading higher today. Uh, Burger King. Restaurant Brands International, strong fourth quarter, names a new CEO. We jump over to theirs. QSR is their symbol for Burger King. They're down 5.3%, even as this market catches a little bit of a bid right now off of the lows from where they are. Burger King trading down to about 64.79. They got a couple other brands in there, I think, as well. What do they have? Yeah, so earnings they miss by two cents, revenue they beat slightly, and the market. They don't want to see that. Speaking of making money, Palantir, I believe it's first product profit ever, right? Yeah, first profitable quarter ever. They come in with a surprise profit. Market loves that. Earnings per share, four cents adjusted versus three cents expected by analysts, I guess. 509 versus 502 for revenue. And the market loves when you go from losing money to making money. PLTR is their symbol. They give back some of those gains, but still up by about 11% right now. Let's see how some of the companies are coming out with their numbers. Airbnb catches a bit ahead of their numbers after the bell tonight. They're up 2.3% right now. What else do we have pulled up here? Let's see what we got. My problem is I got too many stories up here right now. Ah, here's a good one. Live stream shopping took China by storm. Now Amazon, TikTok, and YouTube are betting the QVC style pitches will take off in the U.S. It's only a matter of time, folks. I mean... I've told you about how the kids in my household love YouTube. We got to put them on a time, right? It's a half hour, an hour a day max that they get that time with their tablet to watch YouTube. Okay, they might get some more screen time if it's educational. Should be able to buy anything that they're watching on there just as you should. And so you have a bunch of people um, in terms of streaming, right? That are going to be able to sell those items and this talks about different people in here i mean i could go through the whole thing it's a little bit of a longer read but live stream shook it live stream shopping took china by storm over the past three years look at look at the little setups a live streamer sells handbags via live streaming on tiktok at a tiktok live streaming e-commerce base uh back in october in where wuhan china october 12th uh the notable now wuhan china but that's interesting in terms of where that goes. It makes sense, man. People spend too much time. You know, I was looking up kids' content on YouTube, right? So you cannot target children, thank goodness, in terms of targeting for kids is something that they cannot do. So if you're a content creator on YouTube, right, and this is just spending 15, 20 minutes just looking up how this works, how it works, um, the accounts, how much they make. So people who create content for children on YouTube, they get paid a cost per a thousand views far less than most other live streamers because they can't be targeted so the people aren't willing to pay if they can't target children which is good uh, overall for society without a doubt and so what they do so the way you make money by targeting to children is you brand yourself. You sell yourself, uh, you sell products, right? You sell branded products, you sell subscriptions on your website. You monetize the content that you're creating to make it profitable to um, brand yourself and, and merchandise what you've created versus just getting the impressions that you may be able to on something like um, a regular YouTube account, Mr. Beast, all the big ones that are out there that just make money literally on the views that they get from YouTube because they get so many hundreds of millions. Doesn't happen for kids. Well, it would make sense, folks, that everybody could do the same exact thing, right? Kids, you have to brand it. It's another step that you have to merchandise and profit from yourself versus just the views. 
If you're live streaming and you get those views anyway, why isn't everybody doing that? Seems like that's the path that they'd be on. Markets clawing it back. We got the S&Ps just down by four. NASDAQ 100 in the green. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down 6% right now. Uh, 6%, 6 points, excuse me. NASDAQ off 3, Dow off about 72. All the markets just uh, pretty mixed right now. Volatility in both directions, to say the least, in terms of where it's going. Uh, I was just reading some more takes in here in terms of Bloomberg. Is this where I read it? Yeah, this is where I read it. So check out this quote in terms of volatility. According to Bespoke Investment Group, over the last year, the S&P 500 index average daily move on CPI days has been a gain or loss of almost 2%. Doesn't mean it's going to happen today. That would actually be surprising, considering I'm sure most of the time when we got those numbers, right, we had huge misses. You had huge reactions coming into the open. Didn't exactly have that today, so probably not going to align with that. But it's important data. That volatility illustrates how important the CPI data can be. Uh, and yeah, we're not going to get a lot of data for the next few weeks or so. That was one of somebody was talking about that in here. They got a bunch of hot takes from a bunch of different people. Um, yeah, and I like this one. The next couple of weeks could prove volatile. And listen, I'm biased. This is, you know, looking for a little bit of negative action here. But most of the earnings season and the central bank meetings are behind us. 
And this is what we're left with. That's my finish of that statement, right? Leaving us to ponder whether this inflation report is indeed a good sign for the economy and the markets overall. Now, the contrary case to that, okay, is that there's going to be the lag in housing. And you're going to see that lag roll over in housing and shelter's been the strongest component. And that's the next gentleman, Jay Hatfield, is talking about in there. The one after that, though, and this is where I'm like, you know what, man? No, because this one is is the one that I said, be careful of. It's the seventh month in a row of inflation going lower. The disinflation narrative is not threatened. Folks, that's crude that gave the market that acceleration lower for seven straight months. OK, so keep that one as a memory as well. But guess what, man? Markets can't hold this market down right now. Positive in the S&Ps, positive in the NASDAQ 100 by end the program. Stay tuned, folks. Our man, Basil Chapman, he's back. He's ready. He's in the saddle for his program. The Tiger Technician's Hour coming up next. We got our man, Steve Rhodes at 11 o'clock. Fast market at 12. You heard him. Airbnb, right? Roblox, Kraft Heinz. Then we got our man, Larry, Dave White, and my dad's back today as well at three o'clock. Have a great one, everybody.